Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Keith here once again, and I'm uh, sitting here with uh, Ken Roth. I'm actually, it's a good pleasure to be sitting here for this evening. <laughs> We're just having some fun tonight. We uh, just finished jamming a song, and uh, we'll be posting that after. And uh, it's uh, such a pleasure for me to be able to sit down and interview with you, or uh, have this interview with you tonight. So thank you for taking the time first and foremost, and uh, thank you for sitting down and um, taking the time for this interview. Well, thank you for coming by. I mean, it's not very often I get neighbors or visitors in my house. <laughs> I've only been here 40 years in this house. <laughs> yeah. Well, we sat here and he showed me his ukulele, his mandolin, his banjo, his guitar, fiddle, flute. his bass, his guitars. Ken has uh, got to dabble in a whole bunch of other instruments besides the bass guitar. So if you've seen him on stage playing with the Flame Busters before, he's, uh, he's quite talented and he's learning a lot of uh, other instruments as well, so that's quite good to know. But before we get started here, Ken, maybe we could talk a little bit about yourself and, and um, how you got started with music. But first, uh, how old are you, Ken? I am uh, 62 strong. 62 years old? Yeah, 62 years old. I'll be 63 this June. <clears throat> and I was actually born in a log house in Buffalo Arrows in 1955. That's my hometown where I was born and raised most of my life, most well, of my life. And now I've been living in La Loche all my life. <laughs> so Which is, uh, what year did you move to La Loche? I came here in 76 and I met Lorraine and I've been here since then. You met her right in 76? In 76, yes. Wow. And we had our first daughter in 77. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. And my family, by the way, my family, all my family, I have some uncles, most of them are passed on now, but I have an uncle that uh, still living, he's in his starting, turning his 80s. He uh, plays fiddle and he had his own band, and my brothers all played instruments, my father played instruments. When Who I was that you're referring to, buddy? No, 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 no. on my dad's side. Oh, on your dad's side, okay. On my dad's my, side. My mother's side, not too many I know played music. Okay. It was all my father's side, my older brothers, they live out in Vancouver Island. They all played music. Most of my cousins I know that on my father's side played music. Mm. So I always enjoyed music. I didn't start playing until I came to the Lodge and started up with Darcy and Paul. So you actually didn't play the guitar or anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always played so guitar. How old were you when you started playing the guitar? Like you must have been young or? Very young. I don't even remember. I was so young. Like, like, what do you mean by young? Like Ten years? Seven, eight years, years old. I guess really? I started playing guitar. You started playing guitar. And I still don't know how well enough to play. <laughs> who uh, who influenced you back then when you were younger? In those really younger days, you all played. They all played, so it was always around you. Yeah. So that's kind of where you picked it up. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. And then you started your first band, which was the Flame, Flame Busters. Busters. What year did you start the Flame Busters? You know, it's been so damn long. I don't remember. It would have been in the eighties. Well, in the eighties. Right? Sure, we're all in the fire department. And that's and basically got, how you got the name, right? Yeah, we got cheap little, cheap little instruments. You know, we used to practice just to kill time. And um, Fernand Fontaine sold us those instruments that time. And Darcy and I were just starting to play. I think they played a little bit. I remember Darcy and Paul been in my life ever since 1978 when their parents were deceased in a in, in, in vehicle accident. So they're growing up as my children. We've known them all our lives, right? Well, they know and me. you were with Lorraine, their sister, yeah, so they're so family, right? We became the, we became the, the uh, parent. Mm -hmm. And Justine was, you know, the oldest the sister. Also, she was the parent also. I see. So we kind of looked at her. And so Darcy and Paul and Stuart were all in the fire department. We started playing and playing more. And that's when uh, one day we decided, let's, let's go and try to band play. And prior to that, when I first came to the Lodge, is through uh, Turtle Lake Band. They were playing, and I was visiting an uncle in Turtle Lake. His name was Elf, uh, Chafee. Yeah. Alfred Chafee. And they lived in Turtle Lake, and I was visiting them there. And Nunu and Elvis, and them, I knew, well, Elvis is a cousin of mine, so I knew them all. They said, let's go to the Lodge. We're going to go play for a dance at the uh, Animal House. Well, that sounds pretty rough to me, Animal House, eh? <laughs> So I came along. My uncle, my uncle Frank, already was here. I think he was already a mayor once before that, and he ran the theater, the show hall. So 
So I came to the hall and, and, and I watched these people, all these dead people were dancing and drunk and some were fighting and whatever. And the animal house back then was pretty rough. And then after that, we ended up at my Uncle Frank's place, the theater, the show hall. That's on Main Street, yeah, yeah, the current True Value Master. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that was the show hall, they had a pool room, whatever, after yeah. that. And then I, um, I, uh, my auntie, little Jean, I don't know if you, anybody knows her, but she's a little, aunt, little lady, and her name's Auntie Jean. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, stick around for a while. So I stuck around for a while, and that's when I met Lorraine through this process. And she got pregnant with Ken Drun. And the rest is history, they say. So ended up living in Lalash. <laughs> and I like Lalash. I've been here all my life. <coughs> I haven't called many names, like white trash and all that stuff. But so it was in the early days, I guess. People nah, didn't still, do, still people, today, some you know? people still call me today, or I'm not from here. Uh, I have 19 grandchildren. Wow. You know? Uh, there's Lamegs, Fontaines, Janvier's, and more Lamegs. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Uh, twin, 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 twin grandchildren. Wow. Yeah. So you've been playing with the Flame Busters since the early 80s. So I know when I got into music, it was probably 87, 88 when me and Carl kind of got I'm started. I remember you guys. I so you were already them. playing because Stuart used to take me and Carl to the fire hall every once in a while and we'd see everything set up up on the stair, upstairs there. Yeah, yeah. And you guys used to have everything set up and me and Carl used to just love getting up on your guys' stuff and having that little 15, 20 minutes of a chance to play on some good instruments because all we were used to doing was playing with our guitars and we used to visit Stuart and that's kind of how we yeah, met the first time. So I kind of remember meeting you way you back then. You got to school one time. I, went I remember we were in the fire hall playing and all of a sudden you came in, you were the fire chief. We were just petrified of Ken because we weren't too <laughs> sure if we were supposed to be playing. And Ken came, what are you guys doing on this stuff? Well, we got real scared and I guess then he smiled and he was just joking. He, so it was... Uh, I'm a good joker. Yeah, he is. He really had me almost pooping my pants there. <laughs> I was, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't take me as a mean person. No, mean person. I know that, Ken. I've learned that throughout the years. And, and but I, you guys still play currently, and you guys are yeah, still, playing still playing. So many years later, that's over 30-some years. We, we opened for uh, Dr. Hook, Sweetheart. I can't remember all of them, people that we opened, opened the shows for. And, and then they'd play for an hour, and then we'd end up with the rest of the smoker. Dr. House. I remember you guys also opened up for Trooper. Trooper, oh yeah, Trooper too, yeah. yeah. Right, a couple times, I think. I believe so, yes. Yeah. So it was a lot of good memories there. Um, so, uh, so the other question I wanted to ask you, what were some of the other places you traveled with the Flame Busters? Throughout these years, you must have traveled here and there. It must be uh, some of the places, that played, other communities. Well, we that played Prince with. Albert, Patch, and... Uh, this whole region, Dylan, basically, eh? Well, yeah, or Jan Bay. Uh, Metal Lake. You guys even went up far north too? Didn't you? Oh yeah, Stony Rapids and that, that Stony Rapids. Ira there. was quite popular. That, yeah, it was too. quite fun there too. Ira. <laughs> <laughs> when he was doing sound and lights, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Some good old fun stories. Yeah, we had some good stories. We had some good times. We always behaved, me and Paul. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is there is there any stories that might stand out to, that you might remember? Because you well, know, as a band, sometimes we have those struggles where we get a flat tire and something happens and a miracle happens and make it to the gig or we don't make it to the gig. Or well, the worst, there's always some kind of story. I'll tell you, one of the worst trips I remember recall is going to uh, Patronac on that gravel road back in the day, and we were pulling our trailer and we left here real early, and we got a flat. And we finally got a tire to fix that. We went back to Blue and fixed that. And then we go a little, another 20 kilometers, we got a flat. So we never got to, to uh, Passion until like midnight. Wow. Yeah. And you guys still played? No, no, no. So they said, well, okay, well, you guys are late, so let's have it tomorrow night. So we uh, ended up spending a night there and we played the next day. On our way home, we ended up a flat. <laughs> we went to Blue Valley and fixed it. And, Darcy, uh, Darcy Pontine was working with us back then, the sound man. Oh, yeah. So he took off back to uh, Bouval, got another tire and fixed that, and we had a flat. Was so it was like one of those nightmare trips of getting flats yeah. and everything on the road. Yeah, the one time, too, is I remember it quite well, is we all played. The, actually, you guys came and we played in, uh, in uh, Buffalo and Arizona. We were all coming home with the bus. And me and Paul were kind of sober going in, and I looked back, and everybody was passed out of the <laughs> It wasn't me. 
<laughs> but the the fun times was Animal House. I mean, Animal House was a lot of a lot of memories I had there. We're all playing there, like you know, we're like Stuart was just going there, you know, and and I looked over at him, and it really looked smoky in the building, right? And it looked really smoky, and it was kind of weird. But I was just so you thought it was just smoking cigarettes well, it was just or something? Like smoking back yeah. then, right? And then I was playing, and I looked over, it was getting worse. And all of a sudden, Snoopy comes in, Flame Buster, he said, you guys underneath is on fire. <laughs> so we are in a fire department. And so you had to stop playing. And the steam was on fire, and I'm going, everybody out, the place is on fire. And I'm going, F you, throw beer ball out. F you, play music. He didn't want to get out because he didn't believe it. But it got so smoky, and then everybody ran out. We ran to the fire hall. We came back. We put out the fire. Right? Someone took the fire truck back, we went back inside and <laughs> started playing for the dance again till about two in the morning. Now you playing that reminds you of the song that you uh, kind of play every time you guys play. Oh. And uh, you kind of, I kind of noticed it's a Bona Maroni, Shake Baby Shake, Peggy Sue. You kind of put all these songs together and you kind of made it your own. Where well, did that come about from? Well, I was sitting here one time and I was thinking, and I said, at the end of the dance, there seems to be so many fights. Everybody has so much energy. So I thought, well, I'm going to make up this song. I'm going to put a bunch of songs together, you know, like, ah, I love it, girl, because Boney Baroni is an old song. Right. You can find it on YouTube. And, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy who said But anyway, he, I love a girl named Boney Baroni. So I just yeah. got my little secret. Started this, right? And I know if we played long, People would just get tired, eh? So we played one night there, and there was no fight. There was a beautiful smoker that night at the end. No fight. Everybody so you just, played everybody out with that song. One more, <laughs> one more, one more of it, right? Uh, so it just became something I played all the time. Yeah, because I remember when I was young and just learning, me and Carl, you guys were quite the inspiration to us because I used to sneak into those smokers and get that opportunity to watch you guys play, you know, as... Every chance I got a chance to watch whoever it was playing, I was able to um, to play. We got some company right now. We're doing an interview. Uh, just bear with us one moment. It's okay. It's just my uh, daughter-in-law. Where where was I? In the, I forgot where I was in the story. You were talking about uh, the smoker, right? About inspiration and yeah. Inspiration of smoking guys. Yes, I'm guys sorry, these guys sidetracked me. That's okay, that's yeah, okay. It's all right, people but, coming but I was talking about how you guys really were uh, an inspiration because we, we didn't have any instruments back then. We used to go to Jack Jandrew's shack by the hall there and we jam and we visit Stuart when we were young and jam. And we go to the talent shows and get an opportunity to play with instruments and it was a big thing for us. So you guys really had a a lot of influence on us too as well, you know. Yeah, and you guys came a long ways. I mean, as you you guys started playing, I noticed that you know you, as you were growing up and developing, you were getting more mature and playing better. And better, better. We were exactly. serious because we were, we were buying instruments from before we were eighteen. I think yeah. we owned at yeah, least twenty thousand dollars worth of instruments. Yeah. You know, like we were serious. At one time, you guys had a bus too, right? Yeah, forty-eight passengers. Yeah. So we, didn't have, guys. we didn't have big buses. We yeah. liked the little small buses. Yeah, you know? we we. We've uh, we inspired each other back then. Did you guys also have the problem when you get to a, a smoker out of town, you bring a whole bunch of people home? <laughs> well, you know how it works, right? You'd rather see people get home safe. Yeah, and we always had a sober driver. It was me or Paul. We're always sober and we're the driver, right? Yes. And that's so right. everybody else was still drunk or drinking on their way home, but there was always, everybody was home safe. That that's was the main thing, yeah. getting home safe and having a good time. Yeah. That was what it was all about. We played quite a few dances in Turner Lake, too. They used to come. And the thing about the loss, he always came and supported us wherever we went. Hmm. What other musicians do you remember? Other musicians you might uh, remember playing with or jamming with? Is there anybody that uh, you might want to mention? Like, um, have you had an opportunity to play with on stage? Or maybe, like, no, you mentioned not much on stage. I remember Armin Marie used to play guitar too, and he kind of, I used to watch him. He used to uh, play that one, I remember. Well, I know man's got a lot to lose, he's afraid to go and spend it, kind of confused, he's got buses in his head, 
And that really stuck to me because I used to hang around with Armour Marine. Right. I, I, I did too. So when I first too. came to the lodge, like, yeah. you know, it was kind of, he uh, had no driver's license, so I was doing the driving. Right? Yeah. And I, I, I used to drive for him to Alacrosse. He did, um, we were doing uh, um, AA, something to do with AA, and he used to come and pick me up, and I used to drive him all over the place. And he, he bought the, my, he actually bought a crib for my daughter when I, because I was driving for him. Really? He bought a crib for my daughter because I was starting off in life myself. I didn't know that, you know. Yeah, and he used to sing that song when he used to travel. He used down. to sing a lot of the songs. Well, that's one I yeah, remember, right? I was mean, such an uh, uh, inspiration, I guess, not only you, but me and a lot yeah. of people too, and then, a lot of musicians. And uh, yeah. as I was growing up, Freddie Morton was, was close to me. He kind of took care of me when I was a little boy also in my, my life. I had uh, no one around. I had no father growing up. So. So Freddie Morin was that father yeah. figure to you. Yeah. And he always played guitar and music too, so that was part of my my growing up, right? And the last, uh, before I left Northern Saskatchewan back in when I was 15, 16 years old, there was Freddie Morin who helped me leave the Buffalo Arrow and helped me get to Vancouver to my, my, my other siblings, my older family. Yeah? Hmm. That's how it all became. I see so um, you've been playing so many years, and um, I'm just curious as to uh, how long do you intend on continuing to play? Because it seems like uh, one year I remember you were going to retire ten years ago, and then you didn't, and you kept going, and you're still going, and you still rock and roll. To I remember you guys always kind of call me up every now and then to come play with them when they play, and it's such an honor to be able to just get up there and have fun. And that's what we do, we get up on stage and have fun. It's always fun playing with you too, especially... Well, that's the whole idea, right? Yeah. You can't have fun. If you're a band and you can't have fun, then there's no use being a band. And and when you make mistakes, don't stop there, move on, just keep going. And and that's why I say to young people, they say, how can you play? Well, learn. You learn how to talk, you learn how to walk. It's the same thing, learn. And stay off of drugs and go to school because everybody needs school. It's the 21st century. You need that schooling or you're not going to get jobs, you're not going to be able to learn anything. That's that's what I always say to young people. That's, that's a good message. Yeah. That is. Back in back when I was a young fella, I got to go to school till I was six years, high, well, grade six, and uh, they kicked me out because I was too bad. Hmm. But I've always learned, I've learned well because a, a lot of the schooling I did was with nuns. And, they were pretty mean at school. <laughs> I not been. as mean as when my mother was going to con to the convent of Lacrosse, but they, they were mean, but not that mean. But what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to your musical influence, what kind of music did you listen to when you were a teenager? Now go to your teenage years. Oh, is every teenager well, going to puberty first, whatnot? When I first heard uh, music, when I was living in Buffalo and Arrows, would be Charlie Pride and... Hank Williams and those kinds, that's all we had, right? Mm -hmm. I ended up to, uh, when I lived in Vancouver, it was April Wine and ZZ Top and uh, Clearwater and, and uh, Moody Blues. The Moody Blues. <laughs> uh, you, uh, who else was there? There was lots of them, Peter Frampton, those people. And I went to, one time when I was a young fellow, I went to uh, April Wine concert in uh, Vancouver Stanley Park. It was called Easter Bee. Mm -hmm. And back then, uh, they call it the streaker. You ever heard of streaker? No. He's the guy. He was the guy who ran around without any clothes. <laughs> okay. And he ran through the whole park. He gets on the stage bare naked, and everybody chases him, and he runs, tries to run away. The and he goes, "Look at him! Look at him! Don't look, asshole! He's got no clothes on." <laughs> well, they call it the streaker back then. Oh, oh. So we're all sitting there, and, and of course, uh, I'm a young person, and. And uh, in Vancouver, area, we all smoked weed. <coughs> okay. Everybody was always high. Mm -hmm. So we're all sitting there, we're all in the crowd, there was all my bike, we're all high. This guy comes, uh, boing, bare naked, runs, jumps over and runs down all through the crowd to the stage. And I go, what the heck was that? And my buddy says, that's the streaker. <laughs> so uh, Ray Stevens actually made a song. Wow, yeah, that's that's one of the that's I remember that song. So it stood up in your mind. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting it was, story. It was so funny, right? <laughs> okay.
We're, my brother just letting us know we're at the 20 minute mark here, so we're, yeah. we're getting close to wrapping it up here, anyways. <laughs> like, but I really enjoy the stories. Can like, I mean, uh, please share more? If, uh, if, uh, if uh, Keith had uh, two hours, I probably could sit here and tell you stories of two hours of just my, 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 my life and the 60 years of my life. Is quite I know, a big long I know. Time. But I like talking about the music and stuff like that because you were. Uh, well, I mean, most of my life was about music. Yeah, I mean, the Flame Busters have been playing in the Lost for so many years that you guys not only influenced us, you must have influenced a lot of other musicians within the community it's as well. Gotta be, so, I, hope, I hope we did. So I, 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 I know did. for a fact you did, you know, because, right. um, cause, um, like, um, I always try to pass on that music as much, and I know that you do too with your instruments. I see you playing with your grandchildren. You got all these fun oh, instruments. Yeah, He's got a flute, a mandolin, ukulele, like I mentioned earlier. And it seems like you just have fun playing those. And, and of course, it, my, my music history goes way back. My uh, my dad's uh, father's dad uh, played violin back in, in the day, mm -hmm. and I own his I own his violin. It's over a hundred years old. And it looks a hundred years old, by the way. It's, it's pretty old. It's not repairable. It's so old. And uh, and 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 I keep close to my heart that thing because it came from down from my dad's family. Like it all came down to me. Mm -hmm. And now I got to pass it on to someone as I get getting older here. You know, I uh, just wanted to ask you, like I know when I played throughout the years, a lot of times when you played for so many years, like I've been around about thirty years too as well. You know, you've yeah, been yeah. More, longer than me. And uh, a lot of times when you get through those frustrating moments or band fights or making mistakes and musicians get mad at each other, sometimes you get through those frustrations. A lot of times you feel like quitting or you feel like giving up. And I don't know how we kind of continue moving on with our music. And I just want to know if you can touch upon how you're able to continue uh, or when those times, you know, yeah, there's been times where we've said, I quit. We and then, you know, we have, we had those, me and my brother, many times where we said, I quit. That's it. Me, me and Paul never had those days together. Uh -huh. But me and Darcy had some pretty rough times. We had some scraps. And he, 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 he'd get mad. I'd make mistakes and he'd literally get mad at me about it. And I'd say, look, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Right. Enjoy it, man. What the hell? Look at all those people that didn't even notice that I made a mistake. Don't don't get mad. Enjoy it. Let's have fun. That's what I want to do. I want to have fun. So when I'm not having fun anymore, I couldn't play anymore. I see. So I, I did I did a couple of times, so that's enough. I I can't do it anymore. But you always kept going, right? I well, mean, I, I was like, I say kept playing. Say, we just verbally say we quit, but then we don't really mean it in the end because we love music so much. Years. Yes, I retired in the last few years, and I said, I'm not playing anymore. I'm tired of playing. But when I, I'm lonesome for it, I want to play right now and go play a couple. Of, I don't. I, I don't think I can do a whole four hours anymore. But you can definitely I can, do, I can do a couple hours. A good hour, and, yeah. you know, a couple times a good yeah. hour, a couple hours. Eh? And I always enjoyed making people have fun. Have fun. I, you can see it on stage when you're on stage and you get that, yeah. and you say, "Keith, here, play the bass now." And I know what's coming, and I yeah. really enjoy that because. And, you, and a lot of people want me to play that. I. I was sitting here one evening and, uh, and there was a wedding going on and I get a call, Ken Roth, come play your song. I said, I'm kind of tired, of, you know. But I'll give you $100 for one song. Really? Hey, come play the song. It's my wedding. Look, I said, you don't have to give me $100. I'll, I'll come play that song. You know? So I went there and I said, maybe you guys were playing, playing the song. I can't remember, but I've played so, so many weddings in the lodge too, right? So yeah, I can't remember I went there all of them as well. <laughs> Everybody, let's boogie, you know. Yeah, let's get right. down, party time, <laughs> behave, you know what I mean. And, and that's what I just love doing. So, is there any uh, thing that you might want to add to the interview before we kind of uh, sign things off here? Is there well, anything that stands out, or anything that you could remember before I ask you the last question? Or well, for me, I think uh, if you're interested in music, go for it. You know, uh, young people. Uh, it's not that hard. I teach. I teach my grandchildren. They all have these uh, ukuleles here. Uh, and they all have one each, and I'm trying to teach them how to play. Uh, they might get it. They might not. But I'm not saying do it or else. I'd say if you enjoy it, play. I got one little granddaughter. She. That's how you pick it up with music being around right. your family. 
Right. Now when they're in your house, I guess they're going to see instruments all over and it's going to be around them, and, right? So. And my wife says, I'm always making noise, but I don't care, I still make it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love the music. Okay. And I, I play, I play uh, often, I play music. When I was referring to your band, The Flame Bus, is there anything that stands out that you might want to add? Maybe oh, the people, uh, places you played, maybe people you met, maybe actually, anything actually, that you might want to add to this interview? Um, Actually, uh, the Flame Bus is, uh, I wish they can uh, play more often once in a while to, to, to enjoy the stuff. Mm -hmm. I know people like this when we did play. Yes, you guys were yeah. still. And, and, and I love rocking, I love rocking, love rocking the house. So before we go out there, there was also Stuart Herman was in the band. Uh, Edward, Edward Morton. Big Man Morton was also yeah. in the band. Yeah. Uh, there was you, Paul, Darcy. And you've also had Darcy as a cell man at one time. I think Darcy, you had Darcy Yeah, so there's it was a few. Uh, both Darcy's, eh? D Darcy Chicken was in the F cell man one time. Yeah, Darcy Jenner, Darcy Fontaine. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember that. Now I remember you, right? Yeah, yeah, we had quite a few people. Everybody, and, and unfortunately, it's happened that uh, they had to move on. Eh? Mm -hmm. And me and Darcy and Paul just kept going on our own. Yeah. So, okay, Ken, I really appreciate you taking this time to take this interview. I know we're kind of uh, getting tight for time. I usually try to keep it under 30 minutes. Yeah, and like you said, if we go on, we could talk for hours, right? Yeah. Because we love talking music and whatnot. But before we go, I just wanted to know if you could give some sort of positive message to our listeners out there that are listening. If there's anybody out there that uh, wants to get into music or or maybe isn't into music and uh, wants to learn an instrument or whatever and is there any words of wisdom, advice or anything you could give an upcoming Chiki's musician? Cheeky's he'll teach you. <laughs> I would too, trust me, I've taught a lot of people. Uh, Cheeky's he'll teach you. <laughs> I don't have the It's patience. not about me though, it's about you. And, uh, I don't have the patience to show I you the, <laughs> the D chord. <laughs> <laughs> I usually share a little bit of my story as I'm doing these interviews, I add a few things but yeah. you know, I really, really good uh, All I say is like, uh, if you have a goal, go for it. Don't let anything hold you back. That's all I can say. I've never let anything hold me back, including music. I uh, I don't know a lot of picking music. I can play the major chords, and that's all you need to continue on. Mm. That's what I'd say. Move on. Just keep going. Take it on. Thank you, Ken. It was such a pleasure and honor to be able to uh, have this interview with you. Take the yeah, time. So. Yeah. I was, and, uh, expecting I, come, mean that from the I was expect, of expecting you to come here uh, a couple of months ago, but it's okay. <laughs> well, you know, Ken, uh, with politics in my life, I'm living a pretty busy life now, and so are you yeah, with yeah. everything that I do, and I try to take as much time as I can to uh, to do these interviews, and when I can, I try to free up my time, and like I said, I'm really grateful that you took the time to do this with me tonight. All right. Thank you so I'll, much. I'll, I'll sing your tune on your way out. All right. See you all. Maybe Move you can on. say something about that song that we did. Oh, that, uh, that uh, uh, it was back uh, when my uh, when my father was passing in 95, and he told me, he said that was his favorite song, Knocking on Heaven's Door, so ever since then I always liked that song. I will post that song on this. So thank yeah. you, Ken, once again. If you want to play while we're signing off here, go ahead and play something. Play whatever you like. Thank you, Ken.